Okay, good evening and welcome to our remote information evening, um, which is going to attempt to explain uh, the process by which the Christopher Hatton Academy will assign teacher uh, assessed grades for the 2021 um, A-levels. And we're all very aware that many of you, you know, are very worried and anxious about the results and how they will be inputted. So hopefully tonight we'll be able to explain that process. So uh, just, uh, I'd like to introduce myself. So if any parents on, the, on there and don't know who I am, I'm Mr. Salisbury, one of the co-principal of the school, and I'm joined by my fellow co-principal, uh, Mr. Mitchell. Um, before we start tonight's presentation, um, I just want to send out a massive thank you to all of you, that's all the students, all the parents and all the carers for all the support that you have given the Academy over the last uh, year. We know it's been an incredibly challenging year and you know I've had 20 years and Mr Mitchell's had pretty much the same amount of experience in education that I have had and you know this has certainly been one of our if not the most challenging time. I'm also going to speak directly to the parents and any carers out there for the support that they have given their students you know without your support they would also not be where they are at the moment and um, we all know and we hope they have a very fantastic and bright future. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the process for tonight's presentation. Um, during the presentation, I'm going to talk to you about um, the guidelines that we've had from Ofqual, which are the exam, which is the exam regulator, um, in regards to the awarding of grades uh, this summer coming up. And then Mr. Mitchell is going to talk through the process that we will be carrying out at Sir Christopher Hatton Academy. At the end of um, the presentation, there is an opportunity for you to ask us questions. And if you look on the YouTube channel at the moment, there is a chat screen. Um, if you have any questions, please enter them in the chat and we will do our best to answer those questions. If we don't get through every question or if you have any other questions after tonight's meeting or any questions you want to ask us in person, um, please you know, phone us, you can email us and our email address is head at hattonacademy.org.uk and we'll respond to them. Don't forget to talk to uh, Mr. Green um, and anybody in the form team and your form tutors about this process. And key thing um, before I start, please remember we are here for you. Okay, we've got a lot of support in place and we want you to succeed. And that is our job to give you those opportunities to move on to the future. So I'm going to start, I'm going to talk about uh, the guidelines that we've been given from Ofqual and the key points. So your grades this summer, they will be based on teacher assessed grades. Teachers will input a grade that they think that you would have achieved in your A-levels if everything would have been normal. Just imagine if the pandemic had never happened and you went through your whole life through year 12 and year 13 and sat the exams that were set by the exam boards in the summer that is the expectation that we are to input the grade that we feel you would have got in that exam. Now, um, in the Ofqual guidance, it's very much says as a flexible assessment approach. Schools can decide on the way that they approach the grades for students. And the reason why they have that, those fle that flexible approach is because all across the country, every single student and every single school has had a different... Um, <laughs> they've had a different uh, experience during the pandemic. Some students have missed a lot more school than others. Some students have had very little loss of learning. So therefore, what the um, Ofqual have decided that it's up to the schools to tailor their approach to the individual circumstances. And actually we have different, and Mr. Mitchell will probably reiterate this, we, our students in this school have had different experiences to students in Wren or Weavers or Wollaston. Um, now, I've already mentioned this, your grades will be based on what you would have achieved if you hadn't missed any schooling, if this pandemic had never have happened and you've gone through all your lessons, you've had all the fantastic teaching that we know our teachers offer you at the academy. Um, your results will be given to you on a normal results style day. We still don't know how that will look in terms of whether you're coming to school to collect the results. Last year, we weren't allowed to have students coming in collecting the results um, because of social distancing. That may have changed by August, but your results will come out on the 10th of August. So put that date in your diary. Um, if you don't get the grades that you want and you're not happy with those grades, there is an opportunity for you to resit your A-level exams. And at the moment, the expectation is will that be an exam paper? We don't have full details of that, but that will be in the autumn, around October, end of October, November time. Um, in relation to the grades that we put in, the exam boards will do 
quality assurance visits. So we cannot just put in at A level, everyone's going to get an A, an A star. We can't do that. We have to put in a grade that we feel that you're going to get. And we also have to have robust evidence to prove that we have gone through a pro process to assign those grades fairly. And that's really important you understand that. So we can't just put any grade in for you. We can't award everyone you know, the best grades. No matter how much we would love to give you all the best grades, we can't do that. And also, you know, we have a moral responsibility. We don't want to set you up for failure in the future. We have to give you the grades that we think you would have achieved. Um, in terms of appeals, if you're not happy with the grade that you, have been, um, uh, that you receive in August, you can appeal that grade, and in the first instance, that appeal needs to be to the academy. Okay, so there'll be an appeals process, and we will give you more information in regards to that appeals process uh, when you receive your results. Um, it's very clear that you, although we're entering your grades, and the de deadline to enter the grades for us as an academy is the 18th of June, that's two weeks after the uh, May half term, it is very clear that we are not to discuss those grades with students. And we've sent that message out to all of our staff that they're not to get into any discussion with you about the grades that they're submitting. So please don't go and ask your teachers or put any pressure on your teachers to um, give you an indication of the grade that you're likely to achieve. Many, many of you will have an idea already because of all your previous work that you've done on the kind of ballpark where your grade would be. Okay, so really important you do not ask staff for the grades that will, they will be putting in and we'll tell, we've told staff not to get into discussions with you in relation to that. So I'm now going to hand over to Mr. Mitchell who's going to talk about the procedures that we'll be putting in place to ensure that these fair grades are fair and robust. Thank you, Mr. Salisbury. Before I start, I just want to uh, say how much we are looking no. forward to having you back in school on Monday. Uh, we were very excited to work out that we could get you back as soon as possible on Monday the 8th was the first day. And thank you to all of you who uh, came in today for your first lateral flow testing. We tested all of year 11, 10, and the sixth form, and it all went really smoothly. So thank you for understanding. Yeah, absolutely fantastic, weren't they? It really was there. brilliant. Yeah. Myself and Mr. Salisbury didn't get to speak to any of you because we were behind the scenes taking, uh, having to administer some of the testing today. Uh, but uh, it, uh, rest assured, we'll greet you on Monday probably when you're back. So what are we going to do? You've heard the word fair, and that's the first thing that I want to talk about. We will be fair with you okay you've got to understand that we've seen you grow from for many of you from year seven all the way through we've got an emotional attachment to you we want you to do well and we are not going to be looking to harm you in any way we're looking to give you the best possible grade we can and our summer assessment program for year 13 is all about trying to get evidence that means that we can move you up to the next grade every single one of you will be treated as an individual so it won't be a whole cohort we're looking at, it'll be individual. And myself and Mr. Salisbury will be checking each and every single student's grades for every subject and determining that we think they are fair and appropriate. And it's something that we have got to do because we think it's morally right to give you the best grade that you could have achieved. And we, we've said it already, we do not and we'll guarantee that you will not be harmed by the pandemic, okay? We have known a lot of you like I said, the majority of you since year seven, we've seen you grow up, we know your potential. And, and we've got lots of evidence. And for some of you, you did really well in your mocks, which gives us more evidence. But for some of you, we want to give you the opportunity to show more evidence. So you might be s between two grades for us. And it's about thinking, right, can you show us that you can get to the next grade? I think that's only right. You've, you're quite fortunate that you go to this school. And that doesn't, I don't mean that in an arrogant way, but because of historical performance, it means that we can put in high grades for you that will be in line with previous years because we think you're in line with previous years. But it means that we can put it in safe in the knowledge that it will be validated and ticked off with exam boards because we've proven over the years as an establishment that we can get the highest grades. So historical data helps you. The fact that when you were at GCSE, you produced amazing GCSE results help you as well in terms of progress. So being at this school gives you an advantage. And like I say, before I go on to the, the individual parts, please, please be rest assured that it, you've got to trust your teachers. We've got fantastic teachers at Hatton. 
they want you to do well, they will be looking to give you the best possible chance. And you've got myself and Mr. Salisbury working behind the scenes that will be making sure that you get the best grades. So please have faith in your teachers and faith in the system. So what are we actually going to do? So we're going to take into uh, a, a number of things into account. And like I say, it's about looking for positive evidence. So we'll take into your mock grades. We'll take into account homework. We'll take into account assessments that have been done in class. We'll, be, we'll take into account classwork. We'll take into account the whole picture. And we'll use that to assign a grade based on the teacher's professional judgment. But we want to give you the opportunity, like I said, to show some more evidence to us. And so we're putting a window of three assessment points. Those assessment points will take place after Easter. They'll take place during weeks two, weeks four, and week seven of the next half term after Easter. It's a seven week half term, and there'll be three assessment points. I'll talk a little bit later why we've gone for three assessment points, but there is a reason. And in those assessment points, you will have the opportunity to show that you are excelling and deserving of the next grade up or consolidating the grade. We're not looking, like I'll keep reiterating, to move you backwards. This is about us looking where you are and possibly moving you forward. We will, when the grades are entered, they'll be marked by your subject teachers. So, you know, in terms of maths, myself and Mrs. Dutt, in terms of if it was biology, it'll be Mrs. Williams. Your subject teachers are the people that will be marking these papers. The subject leaders will then put them on the system. And then after that, at the start of June, that's when myself and Mr. Salisbury get uh, sort of a few sleepless nights as we go through these with a fine tooth comb. We go through each of these, and I'll keep saying this individually, we're looking at all your results and seeing what, that you've been treated correctly. Just, just on that, Mr. Mitchell, we'll also be looking at, you know, at all the data we have on you. So it's not just looking at you know, those assessments. We will go back and look at the grades that staff have been putting you, and we will go back and challenge staff if we think they've given you too low a grade. Okay, really important. We will continue yeah. to challenge the staff here. Uh, uh, two, two little things. We're busy at the moment putting together the assessment timetable. You'll know exactly when the assessments are taking place. You will know... You'll have a topic list telling you what's in those assessments. We're, we're, we're trying to help you to prove that your the abilities. And they will be taking place in the sports hall. Now, you might say, why are you making us go into the sports hall? It's based on a number of factors. One, it's based on a number of students are entitled to extra time. So by having it in the sports hall, it means that all the students that deserve the extra time through access arrangements, all those needs are met. It also allows us... To, to be fair, and that's what we're all about, being fair, so that we know that the timing uh, fits in with the correct time, you've got the right equipment, you've got the right formula booklets, all the things that you could feel that you might be disadvantaged and, and things like that. So it's in the sports hall for a reason, and again, not to make your life difficult, but to make your life better. Okay, uh, There is uh, a thing that some people are worried about, and it's about what, what will be assessed. Please remember that we've got three weeks when you come back. So there may be some uh, materials taught during those three weeks that will be assessed. We will give you the topic lists. The things that are in the topic list will be covered in the lessons between your assessments. So anything that's on the topic list, we will go over in class. So there will be nothing new, nothing that you only were taught in uh, during lockdown. It will be the stuff that you've had every opportunity to, to understand. And as year 13s, you know how much work your teachers are prepared to put in for you. You know, get in touch with them. If there's a topic you don't understand, email your teacher. They will go the extra mile for you because all of this process, like I say, you're, you're coming up most of your 18. This is about us trying to help you to get to the next stage in your future. But as well as that, we've got to be safe and we've got to be fair and we've got to be morally right. But make use of your teachers. Okay. Um, I've, I said at the beginning of the presentation, there's a number of opportunities. You know, if you want to put a question in the chat, please do so. You know, if you don't feel comfortable this evening, put a question in the chat, then please email us, contact us at school, speak to um, your, your year leaders. Um, you know, but we're here to support you. But we have had a number of questions that have come in. So we're going to answer some of those questions uh, 
maybe some questions that you might have. So this one, um, I'm concerned about my child's well-being, carrying out assessment increases the pressure on my child. Now we're fully aware that any type of assessment does increase pressure and there's a lot of anxiety about, but the design of these assessments are there to be supportive. We want to be able to demonstrate that you, you know, the grades that we already know that what you can achieve, we've got proof that you can get them. You know, they're not here to move you down a grade as Mr. Mitchell are then, they're here to support your grade. And actually in the process by having free assessments, we hope to relieve some of that pressure and anxiety because if you go into one assessment and you don't do very well, in your A-levels, you wouldn't get a chance to do that assessment again, but we've got free windows, so you may do poorly in one, but that may not show off what you're really capable of. So the next one, you know, we can look at that one. So hopefully this process will reduce the anxiety because one, we already have a huge amount of data on you and these assessments are there to support you, you know, and your teachers will be teaching you the content and telling you the content that are going to be in these assessments. Okay, the second question is about this thing that Gavin Williamson said, no exams and, and on various websites, so be, you won't, you know, no exams, not in sports, not in uh, exam halls just mini tests, class tests, and, and uh, sometimes there's headlines and then there's things behind the headlines that you've got to uh, really read into. Trust us, or trust, you know, we have went through all the, the different frameworks. Uh, in terms of this, uh, the reason why across the country exams were abandoned was because the government did not think it was fair to judge schools and students in Liverpool in the same way as schools and students in, say, Devon. The amount of lost learning in certain towns and cities, where it was, where it, whether it be Hull, whether it be Liverpool, is very vast and different to the amount of lost learning that students would have had in Exeter. So please uh, think about the, the reasons that it's not, we're not trying to be cruel. And in fact, I was in a meeting yesterday with representatives from the other Wellingborough schools. All the Wellingborough schools are doing the same a, a, a form of this. So it's not that we're treating you any different to any of the local schools. It's because we all have interpreted the guidelines in the same way and think this is the fairest way for you to show to us that you deserve the highest grades. Okay, so the next question is about, you know, all the assessments that have done previously have shown they're, you know, really fantastic grades and they're worried about they're going to perform poorly in the upcoming assessments. Now, I just want to put this, you know, if, imagine if that was the case that it was your A-level exams and you've done all well all year. In your normal A-levels, we would never be able to take that into consideration. It would be about those exams that you did on that day. I've just said we no, these assessments only form part of supporting the teachers in assigning those grades. You know, your previous, your, you know, your mocks you did in um, November time, was it? November, December time. We will utilize them as well to support us in that judgment. So doing these assessments is a supportive process. We will take into consideration all the past exams. If you were sitting your exams as normal, they would never be taken into consideration. So again, these assessments are there to support the process. They're not everything in terms of the final grade. So we do see them as a supportive process. But now, before I go on to the next question, I know some of you are sat there wondering about your UCAS choices. So you've, you've got hopefully got all your offers in by now. And you're thinking, well, I don't know what to put first choice, second choice. All I'll say with that is get in touch with us. Speak to uh, Mr. Green, speak to Mrs. Dutt, speak to myself or Mr. Salisbury. Have a conversation with us. We, we can't tell you what grade you're going to get, but we can guide you into what path we think would be sensible to put as a first choice and as a backup choice. So don't feel alone with that. Uh, but like I say, we can't, as we've said already, tell you what grade we're going to give you but we can guide you through this process. And as we'll always say, communication is the key. But anyway, back to the questions here. So what happens if you disagree with the grade that the academy gives you? Hopefully that won't happen. If it does, there is an appeals process. The appeals process goes through the school. So when you get the results on the 10th of August, if you're disappointed, the appeals process starts with uh, getting in touch with the school, i.e. myself and Mr. Salisbury, and goes through that. Now, Last year we used teacher assessments and throughout the cohorts of year 11 and year 13, you know, pretty much 300 students, we had one appeal. So we think we did quite a good job last year and we actually have learned from it and think we're going to do an even better job this year. So the, the, the grades that you get as year 13s should be very reflective of what you deserve. And I think that's quite interesting out of, if I think we, you know, approximately 2,000 
grades for GCSE and another uh, about 600 grades for A-level. I'm not sure if I got my maths right. <laughs> Only one person came back to us and appealed the grade they got for one subject. So, you know, we know that we've got a very robust procedure in place. So um, I missed a great deal of school as I've had to isolate. We all know that different people have isolated at different times. So concerned, the assessments will test you on subjects that you have missed, content you have missed. We've very much directed subject leaders over. This is why there's these gaps between the assessments to teach you content over the next few weeks that will be in your first assessment. Then there's a little gap where they're going to teach you the assessment again. Okay, we also know your A-level students and we, we know how independent and we expect you to be independent. So, you know, any work, hopefully, you know, you haven't missed much schooling, but the assessments will be based on work that you have done whilst you're in school. Okay. Now, the, the next one, what happens if I miss an assessment? Now, we've got to be realistic that uh, although the data looks promising, COVID-19 is not going away. Uh, there are still cases of it in Wellingborough and there may be a chance that a, a student's unlucky enough to A, test positive or be in a household where they have to isolate. So the reason we put the three windows in was that if you miss one of those windows through uh, for COVID reasons, it means that you've still got two other uh, opportunities to show to us how strong you are in that subject. So it's to just keep the opportunities alive. And the last question we've had, when, um, both this is uh, year 11 students and um, uh, I expect some of you will also be asking, what day will we leave school? This is an interesting one. We have not had any um, official guidance on the date that you will leave school. We've told you that um, all the assessments will be completed before May half term. Now, there is a reason for that is because we want teachers then to utilize those assessments with your prior data, all the information they have to assign these grades. Myself and Mr. Mitchell then need time to moderate and challenge subject leaders on this. And as I said, we, we've got a very robust process that Mr. Mitchell already said, we'll have sleepless night, long weekends. We want to get these grades correct. So that will take a bit of time. So the deadline for our grades to go to the exam boards is June the 18th. So that is two weeks after the May half term. So all we can say at the moment, and we do not know this, June the 18th seems a sensible day to say it's your last day. Um, however, you know, I can't guarantee when your last day will be at the moment. And, you know, we will, as we get more information in regards to that, we will let you know. The government yeah. could mandate us that you have to stay till the end of June. We, we don't expect that to happen, but they're within the right to tell us and, and we have to follow that. The expectation that we at the moment think that after May half term, there'll be a number of subjects that want you in, whether it's to finish the required practicals for the sciences, whether it's a practical subjects like art and DT that they've got a product design sort of where they've got something that they want you to finish uh, and that's where we'll make it. But we will keep you in touch and, and we, want, we intend to have a, a proper leave as assembly as well. And yeah, we want proper, to say goodbye, proper, proper goodbyes. Goodbye. You know, we, as a year group, as I keep reiterating, you know, it's been a journey. You've been at this school um, for a um, long time. Fingers uh, crossed, Mr. Mitchell, June the 21st, so they may be able to have some kind of leaving due after June the 21st, you know. Fingers crossed. We yeah. can't guarantee anything, but, you know, maybe, maybe that could happen. Mm. Um, got a couple of questions. Well, thank you for, you know, taking time to uh, join us this evening, even if you're not in person, but joining us, we'd have loved to you have you sat here. But got a couple of questions. Um, so question here, Mr. Mitchell, can we provide any evidence that teachers may not have I have assessments at home that were done in school from year 12 and 13 where I've been one or two minor marks off a higher grade. Now, my view on that is that most, pretty much all the assessments that you do in school, your teachers are aware of them and they do track them. I know certainly in sciences, they have fantastic databases. I know in maths they yeah. do. So I would have thought they would have that. But, you know, talk to your teachers. What I'd say, go back to your talk to your teachers. Obviously, your teachers cannot talk to you about the grades that they're going to input, but make sure you talk to your teachers. Um, got another question. On, on oh, that sorry. one, I'd say just don't, don't throw anything away. No. Don't no. throw anything away. Um, will grades be communicated to universities on results day or beforehand? I assume it'd be a similar process to what they normally do, UCAS. Yeah. Will. On that, we're not 100% certain, but what generally happens, which we presume, is that on the morning, uh, so August the 10th, the morning of that, you will get, uh, before you get your results, generally you get an, a message through UCAS saying whether you've been successful on your, into your course. So I'm guessing that that will be the same. Uh, and then 
accommodation offers and things like that can can process from there. But I don't, we don't know. Is the honest answer? But I'm presuming it's the same. Okay. Question here: Do they need to complete all three assessments if they already work at a high grade? Yes. For for fairness, we do need you to, and uh, you, uh, we do need you because, uh, as a class, the, the papers we need to know. Uh, the whole class to do the paper so that we can sort of rank you in the paper and see who's who's at the top, who's at the bottom. It allows us to adjust where we think the grade boundaries should be. It's very difficult to do that if not everyone takes it. So to be fair for the whole cohort, it's important that everyone has to do all three assessments unless it's COVID reasons. Uh, let me see this. So what if someone didn't do well in their... I need to wear my glasses sometimes. <laughs> what, what if someone didn't do well in their mocks, but well in other assessments? It's, it's on the balance of evidence, so that not one bit of evidence is going to count more than others. Uh, it's, it's all the evidence added together. So if you had a bad mock, these three occasions, you've got, you've got to show us you know, that that mock was just a, a, a sort of fluke result that we're going to... Uh, put in the bin uh, and you've got three other opportunities to show us that so I think I think everything's to play for but again uh, all of this is about moving you up to the next grade so it's consolidating and moving up we're not mm. looking to put anyone backwards yeah I mean that's that's really key we're not looking to move anyone down grades we, we want to have the robust evidence part of it is having that robust evidence as well if if we were quality assured we we feel that we have a very robust procedure and we've already got that in place but there is a, you know there is a chance that the exam boards could come in and quality assure us and say you know why have you assigned that grade to that student and we do need to have robust data and robust evidence to show to them so um to, 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 to do that what if uh, can students know their grades in the assessments as this isn't the final grade necessarily so in terms of the assessments that are carried out in um in the, the way we're carrying out the assessment grades yeah at the moment no our plans are that we were not going to share, share any uh, grades or marks because uh we actually think by knowing that it, it adds far more pressure on to you it also uh, we know that some of our staff will be marking these over over the may half terms uh, and things like that and so just for the well-being and the workload of staff and for your own well-being as students we don't want you to be getting upset about a bad exam and how it's going to have affected you we will have conversations with you if you want to talk it through. So don't bottle it up. Speak to Mr. Green, speak to Miss Mulcahy, speak to myself, speak to your form tutor. Please don't let it eat away at you. But we're not going to be discussing the grades because, like I say, from previous years, we know that it can have a negative impact on people that they think that they have blown their chances. Yeah, I've got a question. Could the assessment be optional? You know, uh, our view is that we want to make it a fair process for all and a same process for all, a bit like the normal um, A-level grades. You all carry it, have the same process, and therefore we see that everyone should follow the same process. And by doing these assessments, it's a fair and level playing field for everyone. We've also got a question, Will, um, how will upgrading the grades to accommodate the time lost to show how we would have done if it was a normal year? Now, we always collect evidence and we have evidence to show how our students perform for for i mean as long as i remember i could go yeah. back years and show evidence to show where our students got in certain assessments and their final grade so we know the progress so we call it like a flight path and we know how our students do on these flight paths and they are uh, in sometimes individual and that's why we have to look at each individuals but we can see a flight path so we know you know, if it was a normal year, how students would have progressed. And we take that into account and we look at that information and we will show that. And we have that information if an example, if one of the exam boards came in and said, you know, you, that, that student, show us why they should be in A grade. Well, we can say, well, in their mocks, they got this grade in all the other assessments. And in our previous years, this is the flight path that students take. So we're very confident that we will be able to um, have the evidence to show for anybody who wants to come in and moderate our results, you know, that flight path, how our students move as they move through years 12 and 13. And it's also the trust. And I'll say this, you've got to trust the school and you've got to trust your teachers. You know, for, for, for many of these teachers, take myself for instance, I've been teaching A-level maths for over 20 years. We know, or and I know, what a grade looks like and a grade C student looks like it, it, it doesn't matter 
how much of the course you've missed by looking at certain topics that you've done we can very accurately assess where you should be so just you've got to have faith and trust mm. in the school and in your teachers yeah so lots of questions about um, and we do understand you know questions about the worry and uh, you know the anxious of not knowing how these assessments have gone and it will cause people more stress you know i, I want to reassure you that they're to support us you know they're not everything about your grade and we have a lot of information and a, li uh, a further question um again from rebecca um was you know so will grades naturally increase and I, I don't know whether you mean from naturally increase from possibly the mocks most students do improve from their mock grades but mocks are sometimes only a snapshot of a certain part of the course you know and that's different for every single subject and your subject teachers know about what that mock was about and I, I can give you an example from last year the geography there was a number of students in their geography mock last year thought they absolutely amazing but it only assessed a very small bit of the course and there were lots of other assessments that have been done over the year and it, it got a little bit confusing because I think Gavin Williamson said oh sh staff can use mock grades now some students last year suddenly thought well I did really well in that bit bit of one of my mocks and therefore I'm going to get that grade Gavin Williamson soon retracted that and said no you can't use mock grades so mock grades are only part of of the course and that's why we can't be too reliant on just mock grades it is all the other assessments that you've done in lessons because I know that many of you probably are looking and thinking well I did brilliantly in my mocks but don't forget mocks only represent a small amount of the course and help inform our judgments uh, and I just just to reiterate it's we'd love to give you all A stars for every subject but it, it's it's not fair uh, and morally it's not right and so we're looking to give you get evidence to give you as high a grade as possible but we have to be realistic okay so what we're saying is we're not looking any of these assessments we're not looking to harm you it's looking to consolidate mm. to give us e evidence that if you did well in your mock that that was accurate or if you did bad in your mock that that was a, a fluke result or that you deserve to go to the next grade Just I missed a question here and I think um, practical subjects like, like art which isn't going to be exam based how will we ensure we get a fair yeah. grade so the, the is art is very one. much based on the the controlled assessment piece of work the NEA piece of work uh, there is a time there will be time given to to the art cohort when they will be in the art department uh, working on the on their piece and there will be a moderation process it's 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 a it's, a, it's one of the things that we're still waiting for is actually art because in, in a normal year you get given your art grade for your part of your piece you then have a chance to challenge it before it gets sent off now they've not said how they're going to do that if they're going to allow that to happen so it's very interesting that one it's one of the, the the pieces we're still waiting for we're still actually waiting for some confirmation to do with btex the 11th of march we're going to be getting some more information about btex so there are there are quite a few unknowns still out there and and we're, we're just working mm. to what we've got i uh, really and i think this is a really good question if the assessments are going to be a shortened topic list so we've said it's going to be what we're we're going to you know teachers are going to explain to you what's in the assessments we've catered lessons so you know the lessons before the assessments are going to focus on what do they prove in terms of what we know it's not just about what you know it's about the skills that are involved in answering these questions so we've very much said that the um, assessments need to be differentiated the exam boards are producing assessment material um, that will be made available before they said the end of march isn't it is it yeah. so and we've asked subject leaders to utilize some of that assessment material so what it will be is a range of exam questions that that you know schools don't have to use them but they are there to use because they are unseen questions so you know we know that past papers etc and um, most students across the country have got access to the internet and it's not like when we sat our a levels and gcse's where the, the internet wasn't there so you couldn't go searching for all these past questions so we know that many students will go and look at the past questions and that you know to be to be absolutely honest that's a fantastic revision technique going over past questions we know that's one of the the best ways to revise but these hopefully you know they will be controlled and they won't be available and uh, people you know they can be done and we although we are aware that some of them will get out there on the internet yeah. but 
you know, the expectation is that some of these papers will be used, some of these questions will be used in the assessments, but we've got to wait to see what yeah. they are and until Easter. We'll be honest, you're not all going to get 100% in these assessments. You know, the, the, the teachers are very skillfully putting the papers together so that there'll be some s quite straightforward questions, but there'll be some really problem-solving extended questions on all the topics as well, in the topics that you're covering as well. So the, 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 the top students who are going for the A stars will be able to show that they can handle those and it'll really differentiate. So don't think uh, that you're going to be walking in there getting 100% in all these exams. There will be challenging questions within them as well as some straightforward bits. Got a question, you know, how long are the assessment time-wise, Mr. Mitchell? So the, again, different subjects uh, are going with different things. So a maximum of 75 minutes. Now, bear in mind that some people do get extra time, so that would be added on, but if we say for, for the majority, a maximum of 75 minutes. So there are some that are 75 minutes. There are some that are down at 40 minutes. It's down to the subject choice. As I said earlier, there's a timetable being put together at the moment. As soon as we have got it completed and we're happy that the timings are right, uh, we'll get it to you so you know exactly when your assessments are and when the length of the time. You will not have more than one assessment in a day. Mm. So during the week, you know, you all study three subjects, that one or two of you study four subjects. So you would have one assessment on one day and then if it's three, you might not have the next one till Wednesday or the Thursday, but it'll be spaced, spaced out one per day. So a question about will the free test on the topics or will the first test be on the first few, then then we were we revise the next bit. I mean, subject leaders, we've told to yeah. uh, let, let students know what is so going to be covered in each assessment. You'll generally have, from what, I, and I, you know, the people are putting it together and I've only seen some, but the ones I've seen, there's a topic list for the first assessment, a topic list for the second, a topic list for the third. Uh, grade boundaries given from the exam board. We're still waiting for more information from the exam boards. Um, uh, from what I, you know, they say that they will have full support for schools. We still have not seen what yeah. that will be. So we are waiting for more information on, you know, the the um, assessments that they will be providing for us or the exam questions. Um, and But it has been said there'll be full support. I expect there'll be a number of webinars uh, for teachers to join and we will be joining them. And when we know more about this, we will let you know. I'm not sure whether they're going to be issuing grade boundaries I, for I, these I assessments. Don't, I, I don't, don't expect think, they will. I don't will. think they will be. No. My gut feeling is they won't be. And that's why the importance of having the whole cohort sitting the exam, because then we can see where you are compared to your fellow classmates. So we know where you have been in previous tests to, f to, b b to your fellow classmates. Mm -hmm. For instance, if you're always, if there's a class of 10 and you've always been third in terms of results and suddenly these many assessments, you're now the best. Well, that's showing that you've improved and then that's given us more evidence to show that your grades should clearly be higher. Yeah, I think this one's a really good question, Mitch, the Mitchell, this question. Usually when an exam technique, and we understand, you know, this period now between your final exams, teachers will be spending a huge amount of time um, going over exam techniques. So usually when an exam technique, i.e. the working and the time pressure, um, be practiced more as the exam's even approached, I think this is it. it's, it's jumped to the next question. Therefore, as students haven't had this chance, is it fair to give them the same timings as they would have normally had and you know actually when that is a really good question and that's why the timings for your exams will be um tailored to the questions and, and subject leaders know will give you practice on those type of questions before the exams uh, the assessments yeah. take place and you know we are accommodating that and we're aware of that and we will factor that in when we put our final judgments in for your grades and we will also ask subject leaders to to use that and again from some of the subjects that I've looked at and critical leaders I've spoken to, there's going to be quite a lot of past paper questions involved in the teaching uh, over the next few weeks. So you are going to get some uh, exam practice because of the number of past paper questions mm. you will see. I think I've um, got a question here. If, if we're doing free assessments, does that mean the teachers will be making marking, I think marking that should be, at least two of the three? Teachers will be expected to mark all of them, yeah. okay? The exam boards, we're not allowed to send anything off to the exam boards. The exam boards will not, even though the exam boards might be supplying us with questions, um, that's for the teachers to utilize them. The teachers will be marking all of the assessments, okay? So teachers will mark but everything. And we're going to keep those assessments in school uh, mm. so that we've got, got some clear evidence. Again, it's the evidence, isn't it? Yeah. Now, 
you know, I'm sure we're coming to the end of this evening. You know, I think we've answered most of the questions. I'm sure you've got more questions. You know, please, you know, email us. Come and speak to us when you're back at school. Speak to uh, uh, your, your year leaders. Speak to the sixth form pastoral team. You know, just remember we are here to support you. And this whole process, as Mr. Mitchell said, we want you to get the best grades possible. And you are in an academy, you know, that has always achieved for the last, in, ever since I've been here, or and certainly the last five years, you know, one of the top performing schools, not just in the county, but also in the country, in the progress that students make. So, you know, that sets you in, that puts you in a really good position. You know, so the grades that we will be able to assign to you, you know, will be the grades that you will be capable of getting and will show the progress that you have made. But we want to give you the correct grade. We see that morally, we see that as really important. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Salisbury. Yeah. I just want to say, please, I've said it already, just trust your teachers. We're, we're lucky and fortunate that we've got an amazing group of teachers in this school. Have faith in your teachers. Can, I, can teachers. I just say, one question that's come in, and I think we've discussed this, myself and Mr. Mitchell, and we can think of a, uh, I'm not going to tell you the class, but we can think of a particular class where this might be the case. So if it's a smaller class, you know, and students, where all the students are likely to get A star or A's, you know, is it likely that many of these students could achieve an A star? And we've, we've discussed this already, haven't we, Mr. Mitchell? Yeah. And we certainly feel... That if students deserve to get an A star, it doesn't matter the size of the cohort. Exactly. It's it's, it's not we don't we we're not uh, uh, year thirteen. We're not sp looking at a subject and saying to subject leader, you can only give three two A stars. We you can only give five A's. You can only give three B's. We're not. Uh, that, that's a kind of how the algorithm worked last year or didn't work. It didn't work. No. It didn't work. Uh, you 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 get what you deserve. Uh, exactly. No of that. You and get that what I, you deserve. I, I think that's a brilliant question because. You know, we know there are cohorts and, you know, I'm, I'm not going to give any because we're not allowed to tell you what grades, but we have already had discussions about certain cohorts of students where, you know, potentially half the group would be getting A stars or A's. And, we, and there is other cohorts where pretty much, you know, it's very close that all of those students would be getting that top grade or at least A star A or B. And we are very happy to put those grades in if they're the grades that we know that you would have got in your summer exams. We will have no hesitation to do that. We will not have a staggered A star. We've got to give two A's, two B's, two C's. That's not how we will work. We will give you the grade that we know that we think you would have got. Okay, I think we're going to end the presentation now. And, you know, we are very excited about Monday. We're really looking forward to seeing you. If you do have any further questions, please you know, get in touch, email us, and we'll try to respond to them. Um, you know, obviously, we might get a bombarding question, so it might take a little bit of time to get back to you, and it might be a message that comes from your lead year leader. But can't wait to see you on Monday, and thank you for coming in today for all the lateral flow tests. And yeah, and, and I'll, thank I'll hand you. over thank to you, Mr. Mitchell. Thank you for your time. And I'll finish by just saying communication is the key. Don't let things stew. Don't worry. Get in touch, and, and hopefully we can answer your questions. Okay, so thank, thank you. you. Thank you, everyone.